Hey guys, and welcome back to a new Material 3 video. In this video, you will learn how you can implement a tab row in Material 3. And not only a tab row itself, but one that is swipeable. As you can see here, so we have different screens and different tabs, so own, browse, and account. And on the one hand, we can switch between these tabs by clicking on these icons, but we can also switch by swiping, because that is not possible by default with just this tab row, which is the top part here. But in this video, I will show you the whole thing, because that is typically what you want to do with this. Now, of course, as usual in these videos, I will also show you from a UX perspective how you should implement this tab row. One more thing before we get started. If you are currently an Anno developer who can already build some simple apps, but you just struggle to stay up to date with all the resources, you don't know if the way you code is good or if you make any major mistakes, and you just lack an overall structure to reach your goal, then my 10-week Android mentorship program might be something for you. Since in that program, we will be working together very closely to eliminate all your technical struggles. So in this program, I will help you to become an Android developer who is strongly desired on the global market. There's not much time left though since the next round of this 10-week program already starts in two weeks. So if that sounds good to you, then you'll find all further information by clicking the first link below. That is also where you can apply to this program. But now let's get back to the video and jump into an empty Android Studio project here, which is really just an empty Compose project with a surface which does not contain anything. And here we want to now start implementing our tab row. And the first thing we need for this tab row is actually a class that combines all the information we need to display a tab item. So that includes the icon when it's not selected, that includes the icon when it is selected, and that of course includes the title. However, what is also completely okay is if you say, I just want to have tabs with text description, so you can also just have tabs that say home, browse, and account without any icons. That is also completely fine with the guidelines. But in this video, I will, of course, also show you how we can display these icons. So we want a class, which we can also yeah, put right here in our activity, just for the sake of simplicity. Data class, tab item, which contains a title on the one hand. It contains an unselected icon, which is an image vector. And it contains a selected icon which is also an image vector. And if we now take this class and we create a list of that, which contains an element for every single tab we want to have, then this could look like this. So now tab items is equal to the list of, and then here we can create our tab items. And to just have some more options for our icons, I want to add a little de dependency here in our Builder Gradle app file. So we just have more icons. We just want to scroll down add this supplementation and we want to add the extended material icons dependency so we just have more icons to choose from. Back in our main activity we can now create these tab items. The title for this first one could be home. Unselected icon is icons dot outlined dot home. So I just like to have an unselected icon which is outlined to just have an additional indicator that a specific item is selected, so when we then fill it or not fill it when it's not selected. So unselected item icon is the uh, home icon and the selected one, selected icon is icons.filled this time, dot home, like this. And now we can just have two more of these tab items. On the one hand, one for our browse category, which I want to use this shopping cart icon for here as well. And for the final account category, I want to use the account circle icon. And here as well. So let's now see how we can implement this tab row with our tab items that we've created. In our surface, I want to create a little column which just wraps this tab row. For this column, we can assign a modifier of modifier. Fill max size. And in there, we just create a so-called tab row. That is, in the end, just a container which contains these individual tabs. So this whole thing is the tab row, and each item is called a tab, so a tab composable. And you'll notice that the tab row needs an initial selected tab index, or not an initial one, but it needs the selected tab index as a state. So let's just create that here. So for example, val, actually var, since we want to be able to change it, selected item or selected tab index by remember 
And in here we have a mutable, actually mutable int state of, that is a new function. And initially we say our first tab is selected, so the index is zero. We can then hit alt enter to input these operators, alt enter again, and these errors will be gone. And we can then assign our selected tab index here to our tab row. Then what comes inside here are the tabs, as you can see. So here we want to iterate over our list of tab items for each index. So we get a reference to the current index and to the current tab item. And for each of these items in our list, we now want to have the tab composable. There are two overloads here. On the one hand, this one, which just takes into content composable. So you can include any type of content inside of that tab. Or if you just want to stick to the material three guidelines and keep it simple, then you can use this overload, which allows you to not pass any type of content, but rather just a text and an icon, which is what you need in most of the cases, I would say. That is also what we will use here. On the one hand, we need to tell our tab whether it's selected or not. How do we know that? Well, if the index of this current tab is actually the same as our selected tab index, we know it's selected. Um, actually, we don't need to have an if statement here. And we can remove it like this. And when we click on this tab, then we want to update our selected tab index with the index of this tab item. For the text of that tab, we can then create a text composable, which just uses our tab item dot title. And the same for our icon. So in here, we can just say we have an icon for other text in an image vector. And this image vector is now dependent on whether this tab is selected or not. So if index is selected tab index, we want to refer to, um, I don't know why it moves the cursor up there. Um, if that tab is selected, we want to say, want to use the item selected icon and otherwise item unselected icon like this. Content description can be item type. And if we now launch this app, then we can already see that the first version of it should be working fine. Now it seems like I get a Gradle issue because of uh, our Gradle plugin and I need to update our compile SDK to 34. Uh, if you don't get that, then you can simply ignore this. I need to update both compile and target SDK to 34, synchronize this and hopefully it will compile now. Probably because I'm using the Canway version of Android Studio here right now. Yes, now the build seems to be successful. Our app is launching. Yes, there it is. So we have our tabs. And if we click on these, then we can also switch to the corresponding tab. That is working perfectly fine. However, what doesn't work right now is that we can swipe here to actually switch these tabs. Because that is functionality that is not contained inside of this tab row component by default. However, if you ask me, then I expect that if I see such tabs, that I can also swipe to switch between these, especially because that was also the way it worked with Material 2. So that is what we will spend the rest of the video with, so you can also learn how to do that. One more thing maybe regarding these tabs, because there are two types of tab rows actually. If we go to our main activity and scroll up to our tab row, there's actually also a scrollable tab row. So if you have a lot of tabs and not only as many that fit on a single uh, screen over here, for example, if you would have six of these and just you know, just duplicate these and launch it now, and you have a scrollable tab row uh, right here, then you will notice that you can scroll between these uh, tabs here. You can also see that it doesn't start at the completely left of the screen to just show the user, hey, this is scrollable. And that is something you can absolutely do as well. So just that, you've, that you know that, that there's also a scrollable tab row, but let's revert this and leave it at our simple tab row. And now see how we can make these pages swipeable. And in order to do that, we can use a so-called horizontal pager. That is basically what a view pager was in XML. And I also have a separate video about a horizontal pager already, but let's see how this works. Here below our tab row, we now want to use the horizontal pager, which takes in a pager state. We can declare this here after our selected tab index pager state is equal to remember pager state. This takes in a lambda that needs to return the page count. And the page count in this case is just the size of our list. So tab items that size. We can then assign this state here to our horizontal pager. 
And I think we need to opt into this experimental API. So Alt Enter and add this notation to main activity. And we also want to make sure that the pager now fills the rest of our screen's height. So I want to say modifier is modifier fill max width on the one hand, and we give it a weight of 1f. So since we are inside of a column, this weight 1f will make sure that the tap row gets all the space it needs, but not more than that, and the horizontal pager gets all the rest of the space. And here, inside of this lambda, you now get an integer, which is the index of the corresponding page, and we can now use that to tell our horizontal pager how this page looks like. I want to keep it simple here and just have a box with a centered text. So Bob's modifier, fill max size, and let's also make sure that we set the content alignment to center. And in here, we can then say text is equal to our tab items at the index dot title, like this. So we now launch this and take a look here on our device. You will notice that we suddenly have a page here and we can swipe with these pages, but you also notice that this does not have any effect on our tab row. And the reason is simply that our tab row does not know anything about our horizontal pager and the horizontal pager does not know anything about our tab row. So what we need to do is, on the one hand, we need to listen to the currently selected page of our horizontal pager. And when that changes, we also want to change the selected item index of our tab row and vice versa. So if we change the selected item index here in our tab row, then we want to change the selected page of our horizontal pager. So if we scroll up to fix that uh, after our pager state, we want to add a launch effect block. And this launched effect block will trigger whenever our selected tab index is changed. So this will now trigger whenever we explicitly click on a specific tab up here. This won't trigger when we swipe our pages, but only when we click on a tab here. And if we do that, we want to update the currently selected page of our horizontal page as well. So here we want to say pager state that animate scroll to page and the page want to scroll to is just our new selected tab index. And on the other hand, we'll have an additional launched effect block, which this time takes in the pager state that current page, which is the state of the currently selected page. And if that changes, we then want to update the selected tab index to that new page like this. If we now launch this again, take a look here, then you will notice if we now click on browse, then our horizontal pager will switch as well on account on browse. If we swipe here to home, then our tab row will also switch. So that seems to be working just fine, but there is one thing we didn't consider yet. And that is if we are on the very right item here and click on the very left item, then you can see it actually just switches to the middle item. So why is that? The reason is that this current page state also changes while the animation is actually playing. So while our horizontal page or what our tab row is animating from the right to the very left, this current page gets set to index number one. So the browse item in between. And when that happens, this launch effect block will trigger again and update the selected tab index with the current page, which in between is one. So it will keep the middle item select. How can we fix this? Well, there is an attribute or the pager state, which you can use, pager state that is scroll in progress, and only if we're not scrolling, so there is no animation progress, only then we want to update the selected tab index. We also need to add this here as a key, so pager state is scroll in progress, and this should fix this issue. So if we're now on home and we click on the last item, then that is working perfectly fine. We are on the account page. We can still swipe here, a little bit laggy with my mouse if I use my finger that everything is super smooth as you can see. Okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, if you're interested in a very individual Android mentorship where we will be working together very, very closely over the course of 10 weeks, then check the first link down below and apply for this. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.